Hey guys, I'm Steven, the creator of Glitterville, and you're watching Handmade Holiday, the series where we show you DIY projects for all your celebrations. And today, we're celebrating the most wonderful time of the year by making a Frosty Folly snowman figure. So let's get started. Making figures is one of my favorite craft projects ever. And today, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do it by using just a dowel and some wire, paper clay, and a ball. And you can use this your entire year for all the different holidays and all the characters that you wanna make. So, for the head, I've got a one inch styrofoam ball that I'm gonna dip into some water. Then, I'm gonna take a ball of paper clay. Now this is my favorite kind of clay for this project because it's very forgiving and the end quality looks like paper mache. Now, I'm gonna roll a ball like this and you always wanna keep your hands moist and have a bowl of water nearby. Now, once you've got your ball of clay flattened out, and if you keep wetting the edges, you can really smooth them out. Then I'm gonna take my styrofoam ball, and you could also use a foil ball instead. Put that in the middle of my clay, and I'm just gonna pull the clay up around it, like this. Now, you want enough to cover the ball, but you don't want the ball to be gigantic, so I'm gonna snip off a little bit like that, and then start rolling the ball. Okay, so this is pretty good. Now, this is pretty much the base of all of your figure heads. Now, to hold it, I've taken another dowel, like this one, but I've sharpened the end with a pencil sharpener. Now this will allow me to put it into the head, to hold it when I'm painting and when I'm sculpting. Now, getting the shape of your head right is the most important part. So make sure that once you've put it on the stick, you can get it to the shape you want before moving on. So now I have the perfect ball for my figure head. Now we're gonna move on to making its eyes. And for the snowman, the easiest way to do that is to take a number two pencil with a brand new eraser on the end so it's nice and crisp. And I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm just gonna press it into the clay. The thing I like about using the pencil is it makes a perfectly round eye like this. Continue to smooth a little bit on the face. And if your clay ever gets too wet, just hit it with the hairdryer for just a second. Now, once you have your eyes made like this, we're gonna add a nose, which is like the carrot. Now for this, you could use either a toothpick or the end of a kitchen skewer. And then when you go to add it to your face, take the pointy end to make the hole, then reverse it like this. Now you can already see that he's starting to take shape. Now one thing I like to do when I'm making figures and sculpting heads is to take a little base that's made of wood. Now I've gold leaf this one, but you just drill a hole in the middle the size of your dowel and make yourself a stand that you can sculpt on or paint later. So his head is ready, except for drying. So I'm gonna set him aside. Now for the body, we're gonna to go to our 1 4th inch dowel, and I'm gonna take a ruler and measure three inches. So I'm gonna mark this one at three inches. Now you can cut your dowel with a tool like this that cuts mitered pieces of wood. Once you've got your three inch piece of dowel, you're gonna lay it down and take a number two pencil. And I wanna mark where my arms and my legs are gonna be. So we're gonna allow a little bit for the neck. I'm gonna make a dot, and this is where his arms will go. Then, I'm gonna go down to the end, not all the way to the end, but close. Then using a drill that's fit with the smallest bit, I'm gonna drill through where I've made the dots. Once you've made your holes into the dowel, you're gonna take your 16 gauge wire. Now when you buy them in links like this, they're 18 inches long and they're very straight and that's important for this project. I'm gonna put one through the top like this and one through the bottom. 
So I put the wires through the holes in the dowel, but before I bend them down, I lay the ruler beside it and make sure that there's an equal amount on both sides. Now my wires are 18 inches, so there's nine on both sides. Then fold down the arms and the legs like this. And you can already see that the body of your character is coming to life. The next step is we're going to secure the wires to the dowel and thicken up the arms and legs a little bit. So pick up your character. You can open his arms up a little bit and take your floral tape and wrap around the body, catching the wire just a little bit. Now, if you haven't used floral tape before, the thing to know about that is floral tape just looks like paper, but when you pull it, it makes the glue sticky and makes the floral tape work with your project. Now I've done one path down the body and I'm gonna go back up and really secure the arms just by going over and across and across. And I'm gonna move down and do the same process for the legs. Now when you're wrapping the arms and legs, you want them to be as smooth as possible because this will pretty much be in our final figure. And now it's time to start adding the clay to the body. Now for that, I'm gonna condition my paper clay by adding a little water. And then I'm gonna pinch off a ball, about like that. I'm gonna roll it in my hand. And if the clay gets too dry, that's when you start seeing all this cracking. So add a little more water, just sort of slice it in two. So you split your ball. I'm gonna wet the inside. I'm gonna wet the front of my figure and I'm gonna add the ball to it. Now you can see that that's gonna be his little belly. Then I'm gonna flip him over, sort of press him into the clay and add that to the back. Now with your fingers dampened, sort of seal the ball back together. And now I'm gonna add like a rectangle at the top and then we'll blend them together until you get a seamless shape. Now at his shoulders where his arms join and where his legs go into his body, I'm gonna take a little bit of clay and add it just so the wire doesn't come through the clay and it sort of gives him a little bit of a shoulder. We can pop our head off over here, add it to the figure and see just how your figure is coming along. Now, the same little stand that I made to hold the head, that I put the hole in the middle for the dowel, I've also drilled holes in to stand my figure while I paint and design him. Okay, so I've let Frosty Folly dry overnight. So now I'm gonna remove his head and using a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper, I'm gonna start sanding his body. And once you've got your body really smooth, do the same thing to your head. So now I'll add a coat of white paint or gesso. Now, if you're not familiar with gesso, it's great for this kind of work because it actually is like a white paint that has plaster in it, which fills in nooks and crannies and gives you a tooth that you can really paint on later. So once you've painted the entire character white, we're gonna set it aside to dry a few minutes. Then we're gonna add shading and all the details. So wet your brush, dip it in a little blue paint, put in a little white so it blends together, and then just sort of brush over the body, giving it a little bit of blue shading on the sides. Then dip your brush in white and sort of blend it in the middle. And you don't want him to be completely blue when you're finished, so you always wanna keep adding in white. Now the shading will mostly show on the front of his belly and in the back, because at the top, he's actually gonna have a jacket, so that will be covered up. And for the head, I like to do a little bit of blue around the eyes and mix with a little white. Once the shading is done, now I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna start drawing on the details of the character, starting with the head. 
Now for a snowman's face, it's pretty simple, but I still want to draw the lines around his eyes that I know I'll shade and paint. And I love how the pencil looks on the clay. And then you can add your pupil in the center. Now I also know that I want my character to have some nice round pink cheeks. So I'll draw those as well. Then for his smile, you can decide, do you want to do like little pieces of coal, like my friend Frosty Folly here, or do you want him just to have a little smile? I'm gonna go with some little pieces of coal. Now, I'll set the head aside and plan what I'm gonna make for the body. Now, I know that I want him to have a short jacket on. So, just across the front, I'm going to draw a line for the bottom of my jacket, but I want to leave an opening in the front because he's gonna have a shirt underneath. So up both sides like that, and then just straight around the back. So I've marked approximately where his jacket will be and his face. And now we can start painting and adding the details. I'm starting with my jacket. And I also wanna mark where my sleeves are gonna be. And I think his sleeves will be about to there. So I can go ahead and mark that and paint that as well. So I've finished putting the stripes on my jacket and I'm gonna set him aside to dry while I work on the face. Now in painting his face, I've done his cheeks and his mouth and the easiest way to make a dot, say you're making the coal or the pupil in an eye, is to take a toothpick or a kitchen skewer and sort of dull the end and then dip that in your paint. That makes a perfect little circle like this. And now I need to paint his carrot orange. I like to add a little bit of gold metallic to it as well. So his face is getting pretty close. I'm gonna set it down, let it dry a little while I work on the body a little more. I'm gonna take my brush, dip it in the paint, and then I'm just gonna do the stripe on the top of the wire. Once you've done the top, turn your figure and then paint the next side. And we're gonna do that on all four sides and bring the stripe around. Now, repeat this on the other side, then you'll set it aside to dry. So while Frosty Folly is drying, I'm gonna draw his clothes. Now for the tail coat, I'm just going to draw a shape. It's a lot like a beetle's wing. For the lapels, Sometimes it helps if you want to fold your paper, then you know it's exactly the same size on both sides. So I have my general shape here, but with the scissors, I just cut like this, then I know it's perfectly symmetrical. And also, the fold that's in the center will give me a cut line for the center of my cut, like this. Same thing is true of the lapels. Then with a little white glue, we'll start the fitting and attach them to the body. Obviously, the top of this is too wide for his little body. So, I'm gonna take this and I'm sort of round it up towards the waist, like that. Then, I'll check the width on the back of his coat. That looks pretty good. I'll attach this with a little white glue. So I've glued his lapels and his tail coat on, and now I'm gonna paint them with a little bit of acrylic paint to match the jacket. Now when this dries, I'm gonna curl the ends with a dowel and then paint the underneath. Now I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna put everything together and start adding all the other details and mount him on his stand. Okay, so Frosty Folly is completely dry and I haven't cut his arms yet, but I wanna put him into position. Now, it's my plan that he hold a Christmas tree in one hand, so to do that, I'm gonna bend his arm at what I call his elbow, and then I'm gonna put a little tree like this up where I want it to be. I'm just gonna take my fingers and fold back that piece of wire, and we'll wrap it around the tree, which will hold it. And as I fold it back, I'm just gonna clip it with some wire cutters. Then insert the tree and close his hand. So you can see that he's holding it there. Now, I want his hand to look like he has mittens. And for his accessories, I'm gonna use small chenille stems like these. 
Now this will not only give him a mitten, it'll also help hold the tree steady. And as you finish wrapping the chenille, pull one little piece out, which will look like his thumb. Then on the other side, I'm gonna bend his elbow and cut the arm. And then add another piece of chenille for his mitten. And for his legs, I actually want him to have leg warmers. Now to make those, I'm just gonna take a red and pink chenille stem, and I'm gonna wrap them around a skewer. This way it'll also give it a candy stripe effect. Slide the skewer out, and then just slide them onto his legs. Now his legs are warm, but he doesn't have feet. So we're gonna take another pink chenille, and we're gonna wrap it around the bottom of his leg, and then make a longer piece out like this, and squeeze it together. That will become his foot. And now it's time to add him to his base. You can use a wooden base like this one from the craft store, just plain or painted. But what I like to do is cover that wood base in paper clay and add a few candies to make it even more interesting. Then I glittered the entire thing to look like snow. Now I can attach him to the base and adjust his feet. He has a tree in his hand with little pink fuzzy pom-poms, so I'm gonna add one pom-pom to his other hand like he's decorating the tree. In case your snowman's ears get cold, you're gonna need some earmuffs like these that I just bent out of a chenille stem. If you enjoyed making this Frosty Folly figure as much as I did, then give this video a thumbs up and follow us on Handmade. And just remember, make it and make every day a holiday.